Welcome to the magical city of Venice, a place where streets are made of water and the gondolas are your Uber. Let us take you on a journey to discover some of the most amazing experiences this city has to offer. We visited Venice for a weekend, and let me tell you, it didn't disappoint. You have several options to get to the city from the airport. We choose the most fun one, the water bus. It costs 15 euros and takes around 30 minutes to get to the Venice. We had the pleasure of staying at the charming and cozy bed and breakfast Cadal Modena. This hidden gem is tucked away in the heart of the city, in a quiet area, yet the perfect place to discover the city. The owner Nicola was incredibly welcoming and went out of his way to make sure we had everything we needed. If you have watched my previous videos, you know my number one priority is food. Nicola recommended Biraria La Corte, a local spot with a cozy and lively atmosphere. The pizza was one of the best I have ever had. Instead of widely known tomato-based pizza, I ordered ricotta and blackberry cream-based pizza. I can't find the words to describe its taste. Highly recommend this place to anyone visiting Venice. The following day we enjoyed delicious breakfast before setting off on our day in Venice. Our first stop was the beautiful Rialto Bridge, which is one of the most iconic landmarks in Venice. The bridge spans across the Grand Canal and is lined with charming shops and cafes. It is hard to believe that this stunning bridge was originally built in the 12th century and has since been rebuilt several times due to floods and fires. Here is a little insider tip for anyone planning a trip to Venice. Did you know that the best view in the city is actually free? Located at the Tifandaka shopping mall, this terrace offers panoramic view of the city and the Grand Canal. But here's the catch. While it's free to visit, you do need to book a slot in advance to secure your spot. And we did not book it in advance. I was updating the website every 10 minutes and luckily there were some cancellations during our stay and we could reserve spot for two. Before heading up to Terrace, we enjoyed a delicious cup of coffee on the ground floor of this historical merchant center. One thing to keep in mind is that you have only 15 minutes on the terrace. So, make sure to enjoy every second of it. After admiring the view, we spent some time wandering in the streets of Venice. Well, the next thing we know... We are officially lost in Venice. Here is a helpful tip. Make sure to download an offline map. With so many winding streets and alleys, it's easy to get turned around and lose your sense of direction. Our wander around the city took us to Campo Santa Maria, a historic square filled with vendors selling fresh fruits and other goods. I could not resist stopping at one of the fruit stands and picking up some delicious clementines. They were so juicy and refreshing. After our snack break, we headed to the unique Aqua Alta bookstore. This charming shop is famous for its quirky and unconventional displays, which include books stacked in bathtubs and even full-sized gondolas. The shop was founded by Venetian artist Luigi Frizzo, who was determined to save books that were damaged by the frequent floating in Venice. You can also climb a staircase made entirely of books to reach the rooftop terrace for a view of one of many canals. But my favorite part is the exit alley. This narrow passageway is lined with books and leads visitors out of the library and back into the streets of Venice. As we approached the famous San Marco Square, we noticed that it was covered in water due to the high tide. Fortunately, platforms had been added so that people could still walk through the square without getting wet. Surrounding San Marco, there are many cafes and shops to explore. One of the oldest cafes in Venice, Cafe Florian, is also located here. Established in 1720, it has been serving coffee and pastries to locals and visitors for over 300 years. There's always a long queue in front of the cafe, and this time we decided to skip it. If you are planning to visit Venice, make sure to list the top places to see and book your tickets and time slots in advance. We had tickets to visit St. Mark's Bell Tower, which cost around 15 euros per person. The tower offers stunning views of the city. Did you know that Galileo used the tower to observe the stars and planets in the early 1600s? 
I can't express the chilly feelings I got standing in the exact same place after learning this fact. You can spend as much as time as you want on the top to enjoy 360 view of the city. The weather was so warm, thus we spent more time wandering around the canal. As we wandered, we marveled at the city's architecture, the gondolas on the canal, and the simple beauty of the famous Bridge of Sight. Then we walked back to enjoy the Reale Garden and get some rest. This stunning garden was once the private retreat of Venetian royalty, and now is open to the public. For a quick and delicious lunch, we stopped at Aldo Pasta, and ordered pasta, gnocchi, and a slice of pizza. It was the perfect fuel for the next adventure, visiting Palazzo Contarini del Bovolo. It has different opening hours, therefore check it beforehand. The building dates back to the 15th century and was designed by the architect Giovanni Candi. You can enjoy an amazing view of the city's rooftops and bell towers from the top of the staircase. It is definitely worth the climb. Venice is famous for its bridges, with 391 of them scattered throughout the city. Only four of these bridges cross over the Grand Canal, and one of them is the iconic Rialto Bridge. Now we are going to cross another one, the Dell'Accademia Bridge. This bridge connects the San Marco and Dorsadura districts. It offers a stunning view of the Grand Canal and the Basilica di Santa Maria della Salute. Oh, before I forget, on the way to the bridge, we stumbled upon the cutest shop called Pieda Terre, an expert on Friulana shoes. These shoes, dating back to the 1800s and originally worn by gondoliers, have become popular fashion accessory. At first, I fell in love with its colors, but once I wore them, I did not want to take them off. And aren't they cute? Okay, back to the road. Dorso Duro is one of the less touristy parts of Venice, but it still has plenty of things to see and do. One of the most visit places is Scuaro di San Trovaso, a historic boatyard. It is one of the few remaining traditional boatyards in Venice, where skilled artisans still hand build and repair the traditional wooden gondolas. By this time we were exhausted. We took water bus from Academia Station to San Stai. We went to our bed and breakfast to get some rest and get ready for the evening. By the way, if you want to buy some souvenirs like magnets in Venice, do not buy them around Rialto Bridge. It was three times cheaper around our place. We made a dinner reservation at a small restaurant called Osteria Antico Gardinette. It's quite a hidden gem located in a narrow street and has authentic Italian cuisine and intimate atmosphere. The salted mussels and seafood pasta we ordered were absolutely delicious. We didn't stay for dessert because we were in a rush. Here is an interesting story. We stumbled upon an incredible discovery when we got lost on the streets of Venice, a beautiful building that turned out to be the Venice Music Museum. Museo della Musica di Venezia. The museum showcases historically used musical instruments from the city's rich musical heritage, but what made it even more special was that they were selling tickets for the classical music concerts. During our stay, one of the Italy's most famous ensembles was playing Vivaldi's Four Seasons, which was particularly special as Vivaldi was born and raised in Venice. It was a unique and unforgettable experience. Check the concert agenda before traveling to Venice. You will not regret it. As we were wrapping up our day in Venice, there was still one last experience we had yet to enjoy. Savoring Cicetti with April, just like the locals. We stopped at Baccaro al Ravano to celebrate the fantastic day we had in Venice. I hope you have enjoyed our vlog. If you have any questions about the Venice trip, let us know. Subscribe to our channel to not miss the coming adventures. Happy, Happy travels! travels.